Hey, everybody, we're back. Coon Prairie Ramblers, Melman, KC, Luke, and we're confabulating on Father's Day. Talk about our dads. That is this weekend, unless you're listening to it later on, and we talked about it for a Father's Day. We've all had a turn. I guess it's my turn now, and I had a, a father, uh, like my buddy. I don't, I don't remember anything at the, at the very beginning, like my buddy, like the late, great, like Gallibre used to say, I don't remember anything because I was born at a very young age. So, <laughs> anyhow. So was I. <laughs> hey, what a coincidence. <laughs> uh, my father's in the service when I was born. He was in the Coast Guard. He went in in 43, and I wasn't born until 55, so he was Coast Guardsman and a sailor and that kind of stuff. So my early memories are of being with my mother a lot. I was the eldest child, and my father being away, he would go away for uh, a day, or sometimes it'd be for a week, or one time we were separated in 58, he went to Alaska and left us in, in Florida. I think we were in Opelika, in fact, where you were. We were in Opelika, and he was in Alaska during all of 58, and he came home from Alaska after being gone a year, and my uh, sister was born exactly nine months to the day after he got back. Hmm. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. But anyway, he was a good father. He, he was gone a lot. But uh, when I was younger, he would take me out on the Coast Guard boat with him. He, he uh, did uh, tugboats and buoy tenders, and we were stationed at Fort Pierce and uh, Miami before that, and then uh, New Orleans, places like that. He would take me out for days at a time when I was a kid. That's probably illegal as all get outs. But, you were stationed at places where people go vacation at. That's right, but we didn't do any vacation and stuff. Hmm. Anyway, he was the, the captain of the of the boat, so he, mm-hmm. was, he was the boss, and, and he had a little uh, he had his own room, and it was air conditioned. The rest of them slept down in the hole down oh. there in bunks where it was hot and sweaty, and he he would tell them what to do. And I enjoyed being a brat on the ship, and they probably hated that because they had to kind of look out for me and and babysit me because I was all over the ship. He ran a pretty tight ship. I remember one story he told was. Uh, the cook, they were out somewhere for days and days and days, and, and he cooked them hot dogs for two or three nights in a row for supper, and they got mad. And they, my dad always called the cook on the board Cookie. Whatever his name was, whoever it was, he was Cookie. He called. But anyway, they, they grabbed old Cookie and drug him out of the galley and took him out on deck and threw him overboard. <laughs> uh, okay. Unfortunately for them, my dad saw that. He was up in the wheelhouse. What was it, a cutter? No, it was a um, tug or a, a, a buoy tender. They were pretty good size. They were like three stories. A lot of times they push these big barges yeah. with uh, cranes and all on them and pull giant buoys out of the water and, and clean them up and repaint them. Or they, they'd rebuild these markers out of pylons that are driven down in the water. They had pile drivers and stuff. Oh, yeah. Them. Make these markers out there. But anyway, he saw him chuck Cookie overboard. So he uh, he called him to attention there. And he he gave him what for. And they had hot dogs for a week after that. <laughs> and none of them complained. <laughs> well, ho- hopefully they liked hot dogs. Yeah, I heard that. Well, they probably haven't eaten one since. But they, he, uh, he wasn't a, a stern person. You might think he was because he was real serious a lot of times. But he retired when I was 12. And. We moved back to Nocatee for the last time. We'd lived here before off and on, and it's where he was raised. So, But he got he was a Boy Scout when he was real little in Nocatee, believe it or not. Lyle Woods was the, the scoutmaster way back when. So yeah. so my dad took over the, the scout troop. Uh, we'd had a, a scoutmaster before that for just a few months, and he got fed up with us and left. So my dad took it over, and he was Boy Scout leader for myself and a bunch of us. It made a big impression on a lot of us. He taught us a lot about life and living and took us camping a lot and we enjoyed that a lot hmm. he was a big family person i was think he- your father and my father-in-law were friends when they worked out at the gpw the uh, dink d's yeah yep yeah, i remember going hunting with them before down at shore's hammock yeah was your father musical no no he would play a harmonica now he loved the uh-huh. harmonica and he loved records he, he'd buy records he had a million records which i i inherited but he liked to play the harmonica and he would do his favorite song was the Wildwood Flower, hmm. and he could play the fire at that thing. And, and the, ri- the original Wildwood Flower, the original, yeah, not not the Wildwood Weed. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was lucky enough to record him on a tape recorder oh, of him cool. doing that and a few other things. So he would do he would, he would impersonate a train with with the harmonica, and I got all that. So, but he he was into photography, and and he preferred uh, he, early on he took photographs, of course, but he got into color slides. So you can guess we inherited 10 million mm-hmm. slides. Yeah, I love and, slides, too. Uh, my father was, he yeah. took it with him uh, in the service, wherever he went. He, he captured a lot of family stuff. He was real big on getting people together, and he thought it was important to get pictures of everybody. And he always, it is. He always said, make every picture tell a story. Yeah. And now when I look back through those pictures, man, it's just I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And he shot home movies, too. He had an 8 millimeter camera. There was no sound to it, but he started shooting those back in the 50s. 
and I need to get those converted to mm-hmm. DVD one day. But he shot a lot of uh, video of uh, when he was in the service and, and uh, of us around the house and vacations with with family, and stuff like so that. So he was a lot like you. Well, I don't know about that. Well, you I mean, you were into capturing moments, capturing pictures. Maybe I inherited that from him. You don't do well. You do the harmonica too, don't you? Well, I play a little bit of that. Yeah. He was a, he was he was a, he was a hero. He was mm-hmm. I don't want to put anybody on the pedestal, but sometimes you can't help but but do that thing. And I lost him when I was thirty. He was oh my fifty nine. Yeah. He just turned fifty nine. That's dropped, an early age. Dropped dead of a heart attack, and mm. I was thirty. And that's uh, early. I had lost my mom at twenty five, so. I was an orphan pretty young. Uh-huh. You know, time. that's when it really hits you that, hey, yeah. I'm all alone. That's exactly right. I can't go to mama. I can't go to daddy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here. This is it. You feel adrift. Yeah. You can't go back. You can't. Right. And I'm away. responsible for other people. That's exactly right. Look at, all, look at these, these, this family I have now. It's just me. And you turn into the patriarch of the family. Well, I was lucky. My father lived to be in his 80s. You were very fortunate. And my grandparents almost all lived to be in their 80s. My mother died when she was in her late 60s, but other than that, most of them lived pretty ripe old age. Good. Do you ever have any pranks on your father? Uh, let me think. Oh, he was a, kind of a prankster himself. He liked to... He didn't prank him, though, too. Uh, no, no, he, he was too serious about that. I, I don't think I'll do anything like that or whatever. But... Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's what my father was. He was too serious to, for you to really pull a joke on him, uh-huh. except for one time. <laughs> oh, boy. And I don't know what possessed me to do this. <laughs> we were at Smith's Feet to walk around it. And there was a hot shot laying there. On were the you? Yet, you gotta be kidding me. Were you a young guy? You were right young. I was probably, I was young and dumb. Yeah, I was probably, I don't know, twelve years old, okay. eleven, twelve, somewhere. Maybe. So you're prankster. Sure Thirty. Yeah. I'd say around eleven or twelve. And there was a hot shot laying there, and they have different kind of hot shots. Some were real short, handheld, and some of them were long. They had like a red are, battery box looking. Are down. they all got are ready to shoot? I mean, I don't know what a hot shot is. No, a hot shot is is you have to connect it. Yeah. Well, you didn't shoot out tar- uh, tasers. You had mm-hmm. to make contact. So some of them were at least a yard long. This is for prodding cattle. Yeah, right? some exactly. of them were like a yard long. So I'm walking along, my dad's standing in front of me, and I don't know <laughs> oh, what why? in the world <laughs> possessed me to do this. Mm-hmm. And I reached down, and I picked up one of those hot shots. It was like a display, like, you know, they're stacked in a little. It was charged up and ready to go. It was ready to rock oh, and roll. Lord. And I reached up and stuck it to his side. I mm. Last me. place in the world I'd want to be shocked. Or yeah. one of the last yeah. places. Yeah. And I burnt, I laid it to him. So and that time I got finished, I thought, oh my God, what have I done? You done the crowd. Am, the time. And he turned around and I was thinking, I'm gonna get beat right here from everybody. No, you weren't he to put that and, hot shot on you. And you know, nothing ever came of it. No. Really? Nothing. Are you serious? Nothing. I never got in trouble later on. I mean I, And he smiled? No, he looks like you were pretty miffed about it. Wow. You got away with murder just about. Oh, I bit the bullet. My dad would have beat me to death with that thing. After he shot yeah. me with about 47 times, he'd have, he'd have laid it over. Oh, my. He was yeah, a mannered father. Luckily, he got all that drill sergeant out of him over the years. Yeah, he didn't handle that. Bounced me off the floor. I'm glad that didn't come back out of nowhere. <laughs> he, he probably thought, well, Junior just don't know any better. I heard that. I called my dad Daddy for a long time. And later on, I think I got to call him Paul. And when he would sign birthday cards, he'd sign Paul. I don't think I remember my dad ever signing a birthday card. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I kept a few of them. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any of that. Well, our time's about up, but we got one more segment coming up. We'll talk about dads a little bit more in just a few minutes. Y'all hold your horses. We'll be right on back. Let's do it. 